Hi, I'm Stephanie Strange. Want to hear something scary? Queen B. My Oma collects a special brand of antique German dolls, the kind that have a porcelain face and are fragile, but she keeps them in pristine condition. Some of these dolls have been in our family for over a hundred years. Each was handmade and dressed in chiffon and lace. On very rare occasions, she would let me hold them and play with them. But this was always supervised because they were so delicate. Bridget was my favorite. She had immaculate brunette hair and these bright green eyes. Her dress was by far the most elaborate, something right out of Bridgeton. My Oma referred to her as the Queen Bee because she was the oldest and most expensive. Around the time I started college, I thought of the perfect birthday gift for my Oma. There was this antique store near the campus and they had an assortment of old dolls. I found one I thought was perfect. Her name tag read Lacey. She wasn't a special brand, but it was very similar in style. And while she wasn't cheap on a college budget, she was nowhere near the ticket price of my Oma's collection. And it was something we shared and had a love for. So I wanted to get her something that reflected our bond. The night before her birthday, after my ma had gone to bed, I decided to surprise her by placing Lacey with the others in the display case with a tiny little birthday tiara. When I placed her inside, I realized she was a bit bigger than the others and not of the same quality. But it was a gesture I knew Oma would appreciate. As I posed the doll, I noticed one of her eyes was stuck closed and needed to be manually opened. Her hair wasn't as stylish as the other dolls and her clothes were a little tatty. She clearly had been played with frequently by the previous owner, but she was still cute and roughly from the same era. I sat her right next to Bridget and told the Queen Bee to welcome Lacey into the fold. During the night, Oma and I were awoken by the shattering of glass. We met in the hallway, turning on all the lamps and making our way to the living room slowly, fearing an intruder. When we turned on the living room overhead light, we saw glass from the display case broken and all over the floor. My immediate thought was that perhaps I hadn't closed the door properly after placing Lacey in the fold. Then Maya Ma looked at the floor Who's that? She asked sharply. It was Lacey. Only now, her face was smashed and her dress torn. Oddly, she was the only doll who was out of the cabinet. Oma ran over and picked her up. Child, what have you done? I explained the doll was her birthday gift but she began shaking it, telling me that I wasn't allowed to add to the collection and that there were very specific rules. Oma seemed to be fixated on the fact that this doll wasn't good enough nor pretty enough. There was a certain elegance and decorum that must be adhered to. The lecture felt strange coming from the woman who adored me and was always so gentle and calm. She thrust Lacey at me and said something which sent a shiver down my spine. Let's hope they forgive us. I just stared at the mess as Oma began clearing the glass. I picked up Lacey, unable to work out how much damage had been inflicted. And again, why was she the only doll to have been tossed onto the floor? It's almost as if she had been singled out. Oma was still muttering as she threw away the last of the broken glass. She stood before the cabinet, her hands clamped together almost as if in prayer. I'm so sorry, B. She just didn't know. She's just a child still. It won't happen ever again. Was she talking to the dolls? That was when I looked into the cabinet properly 
they looked as if they were staring right back at me. And there, right in the center, was Bridget. She seemed to be smirking more than I had ever remembered. Her expression chilled me to the core. But that wasn't what unnerved me the most. B was wearing a new accessory. Now, upon her perfect hairstyle was the birthday tiara I had placed upon Lacey. The new doll was now battered and broken and Queen Bee was wearing the crown. It was the strongest admonishment I'd ever encountered. I turned to a ma who slowly stepped back from the cabinet. She pulled me in for a hug and whispered in my ear, no more dolls. They don't like it. You won't get another warning. 